All right. Thank you very much for coming to uh, uh, taking your time to come and see us. Uh, like he said, my name is Rod Soto, and he's uh, Jose Hernandez. And we're going to talk about today about uh, some of the research that we've been doing uh, about trying to to achieve a, a unified cloud security posture. Um, so uh, let's get started. Who am I? I am a principal research engineer at Splunk. I worked uh, with this gentleman at Prolexic Technologies, which is now Akamai. I also worked at Caspita at one point. Uh, I co-founded Hack Miami and the Pacific Hackers meetups and conferences. Uh, you can find it at meetup.com. And I created a command and control in no-quarter CTFs. I, I like to do a lot of CTFs. He is Jose Hernandez. He He's my peer at the Splunk Research Team. <clears throat> Worked at Prolexic as well. And we do have a uh, quite a bit of experience fighting DDoS. Uh, and one of the, the I guess, the adversaries we had to fight was Anonymous and uh, LoadSec. So let's get started. Uh, pretty quick. So one of the things that we try to address with this presentation is uh, we obviously in the industry we can we can understand and we we perceive that uh, many many uh, enterprises many corporations are basically struggling with uh, achieving a, a unified cloud security posture. There's sort of a mix, uh, an attempt to sort of. Uh, there's a difference between perimeter security and the way we're gonna we're gonna expose this. There's perimeter security. There's cloud security. So you just can, even though you can try, for example, put for example Active Directory logs with maybe Stack Driver, that may not make a lot of sense. Uh, but we're gonna give you the tools uh, uh, that we actually use. Uh, the tool that we actually that you're gonna see today is the Cloud Security Suite. Uh, we did uh, some modifications to make it SIM friendly, uh, and you're going to see basically some examples of uh, EOK and Splunk, of course. So uh, um, the reason why we, we're looking at this is because the, the cloud has become prevalent. Uh, at times, there's a blurry line, a blurry line when it comes to liability. Right, because at the end of the day, the, the cloud provider has his limits, and many times we're not a, aware of it. And I, I will touch on it. Uh, the cloud adoption is expanding. Uh, cloud security is not an exact translation on inside the perimeter. You're going to see that in a minute. Every provider has a set of technologies, features, security items. And um, um, even though there are several Cloud security initiatives is still an ongoing effort. So what you're going to see today is an ongoing effort. Uh, some of these categories that you're going to see today may change in the future or may include another, uh, but it's, it's definitely what we agree that was the most comprehensive one as of now. And of course, we chose uh, the, the CS security suite because um, basically helps you assess the three major vendors. Of course, there's OpenStack, and uh, um, uh, we we're not going to show anything about OpenStack, but but definitely we believe you could probably fit it in the categories that you're going to see today. So, this is uh, just an example of how prevalent the cloud is becoming. Uh, like I said, the imaginary, which is it's not really that imaginary when it comes for you and your responsibilities. Uh, obviously, the the responsibilities change depending on the uh, the cloud service provider module. If it's uh, infrastructure as a service, or is it platform as a service, or is it software as a service? So as you can see. Basically, you go up to physical security, and then once you get on, on application security and most, for example, of the, the type of services, you are responsible for it, right? Uh, the imaginary line is not that imaginary. What you have, what you see here is basically AWS. Um, they do actually come up front and tell you this is what you are responsible for. Uh, sometimes what we, um, the challenge that we face here is that when, when you are presented with this uh, number of services, uh, challenges putting together all these locks, uh, I'll give you an example. GCP has over 200 or more uh, that I counted um, roles for security. So um, when you're dealing with stuff 
that basically is, is incredibly challenging for a single operator to put together, what we had to use either a criteria that groups many of these single items and some sort of automation that will provide us a view um, uh, when we're trying to assess security. And that's what we're gonna, that's what you're gonna see today. So uh, here's uh, Azure, for example. So I try to show all the, the three providers. This is something that you, if you are using any of these providers, I suggest you uh, that you really review and, and sort of uh, establish an inventory and identification of where your line is, right? What is their responsibility? What's your responsibility? So obviously, uh, this is a part of reinforcing our, our, our point of view. We have this major cloud attacks from the Sony, uh, the Fappening, the Cloud Hopper, the Ashley Madison, just being said that there were suicides about it, uh, Equifax, HBO, IP largely stolen, Mario, Kubernetes, mm -hmm. and of course we just had the recent one, which is Capital One, which was a, a uh, uh, an inside a rogue a rogue inside. So here's an example of what can happen, uh, and here's an example of some of the challenges that we we are facing when we deal with cloud providers at times. Um, even though they, for example, certain vendors seem to be very secure, then we have a case like that Rogue Insider comes in uh, uh, and exposes all this information or steals this information. It's not known yet what, if that data was shared either in the dark web or if it was sold. Um, I use, uh, when I started researching this, I looked at the uh, Cloud Security Alliance, which is called the Three Shares 12 which is basically includes data breaches, insufficient identity, insecure interfaces, system vulnerabilities, account hijacking, malicious insiders, which is uh, the sample we were just talking about, advanced persistence threat, which is nation state or highly organized crime, data laws, uh, lack of diligence, uh, abuse of nefarious uh, or use of cloud services, denial of service, and shared technology vulnerabilities. Um, this uh, has to do usually with multi-tenancy. We actually saw that when we were working at a, a company that basically sees 30% of the internet, a very famous airline who was, uh, they lost an airplane. Don Lemon said there was a black hole that took that airplane. Well, that brought a lot of resentment. So guess what? Somebody went and hacked that airline. And the administrator had the same passwords and many other panels. So we were affected at that point. That's, that's, that's one attack vector. Many people, you don't realize that multi-tenancy and third party will affect you for sure. Um, <clears throat> so here's some of the, uh, uh, the main targets of the cloud attacks. ATO, which is uh, account takeover, key exfiltration, phishing, you can attack, obviously, the provider, AC, AWS, UCP. You can attack the admins because once you get admin access in any of these consoles, it's pretty much have a domain admin. Um, you can use the cloud resources for things like crypto mining or DDoS for rent. Uh, data, everybody's life, private work information is in the cloud. I mean, it's, it's getting there pretty much. And we're still not counting what I will call the, uh, the AI leaks, which I'm sure they will come soon. Uh, we're already getting little drips of it, you know, like we have operators listening to Siri, um, Alexa. So we don't know yet. We don't know where, how is this is stored. We know it's in the cloud, but uh, I would caution that we, we need to be prepared for those type of leaks and they will probably be devastating. Uh, so be careful what you set at home if you have one of these devices. Um, third parties, like I said before, co-tenants, multi-tenancy, and attacks that affect uh, the identity provider. Uh, so here's also a um, expansion of the attack uh, surface, the, what I call the DevOps attack surface, the CI/CD pipeline, source code repository, Bitbucket, GitHub, as VNS3 buckets, CI CD platform. Uh, we know about Jenkins vulnerabilities, for example, Circle CI, Travis CI, uh, container repositories. We've seen some of those recently Docker, Bagran. Uh, the provider, uh, depending what uh, 
the Kubernetes flavor uh, or OpenStack uh, and uh, infrastructure as uh, um, as code. So basically vulnerabilities of, of use of exploitation or things such as Terraform, Ansible, Chef, or CloudFormation. So if we were to reduce this, right, in general view, this is pretty much how you will look at, at the attack surface segments. You have the internet, right, or the internet. You have some sort of a web service, API, HTTP service. Behind that, there's a compute backend that is usually distributed. Behind that, there's usually what I call a cloud LAN or a cloud WAN. And then it's usually in the, that backend, you're going to have the, the big database engines. So you have SQL, NoSQL storage, blog, object, or file type of storage. So can we create a common criteria for cloud security? The answer is yes. And we're about to show that. These are the categories that we decided to settle for at this point. So basically, there are six categories. Network, which is a standard access, VLAN, V1, VPN, and routing. Security, which obviously include, includes the, the CIA, uh, confidentiality, integrity, availability. Although in the cloud, there's heavy emphasis in the AIM portion, encryption, and firewalls. Then you had compute. In compute, we had artifacts, such as virtual machines, containers, apps, microservices. And then we have databases, which can be SQL or not SQL. The storage, which basically buckets and file type of storage, as, as I just commented. And then management. So it could be a Kubernetes flavor, logging setup, and management access. So here's some of the examples of things that we put together. For AWS, for example, in compute, you can see that we included EC2, Lambda, Elastic Beanstalk, ECS. In Azure, we put virtual machines, load balancers, app services, disks, Kubernetes. In GCP, we included instances, disks, snapshots, images, uh, zones, uh, Kubernetes. The reason why we put this is because we're about to show you the example, how it looks together with the checks. And then you can get very granular. So it will make sense in just a few seconds. <laughs> so here's another example of management, the things that, that we were able to uh, encompass the three vendors, <coughs> the storage, security. And again, this is an ongoing effort. Many of these vendors, they are adding stuff or they're changing it or they're eliminating it. So it's hard uh, in, in the sense of, 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 of we can't say that this, this is written in stone. This, this is variable. This is ongoing. But, but as of now, it gives us that unified posture when we're looking at, three, at the three major vendors. And then, uh, then we have the network part. Not sure if you want to take a picture of it. And then uh, the databases. And then finally, we found a open source tool called Cloud Security Suite, which is a one-stop tool for auditing the security posture of these three vendors. Right? The vendor checks are different. Different because of the services are different, the infrastructure, the name of the services, uh, Jose is going to talk, uh, going to talk a little bit about how difficult it can be to, to normalize this data. Because basically, I'll give you an example. For example, GCP, yeah, the output is JSON, but the way the IP, the output, the JSON, the AIM is not nearly equal to, uh, uh the nomenclature that a, a Azure or a, or AWS may have. So that presents a challenge for, for a security operator. Uh, that presents a challenge when we're trying to normalize the data. We were able to do that. And we're going to show a, a, an example. We actually uh, modify the code. We modify the code to make it SIM friendly, right? What we did, you are going to be able to output and then pipe it to either an EOK or Splunk, 
right? And you're about to see the examples, uh, how the categories look together and how you can uh, deeply research and look at it from the operator's perspective. Uh, and then obviously, if you wanna go and uh, dig deeper, into this, obviously you had to do that in your analytics of preference, right? Obviously, uh, we did, we worked for Splunk, so we did, uh, quite a bit of work in Splunk, but we also, uh, show you, actually show you even the, the configuration file on Elk, so you can do it too. So, um, uh, some of the things that, uh, uh, I wanted to share about this. Uh, the original project was modified. Are you ready to jump? Okay, let me let me get you uh, hosted now. Yeah, uh, Rod, thank you, thank you, by the way, for for giving us like that that uh, basis of like why this is important for us. And and again, just a quick quick resum recap here. Like we're trying to distill down all these checks that CS Suite the tool is doing into common categories, um, and with the end goal of like being able to audit in one common language all these cloud providers, right? And and to dig deeper a bit, a bit deeper, and I'm just gonna go back one slide if you don't mind. Um, CS Suite today uses under the hood a set of tools that are actually cloud auditing tools. Um, and 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 each of them are kind of, uh, for lack of a better, specific for what the audit that they're trying to do. For example, G Scout, it's only a tool that audits uh, um, GCP. Meanwhile, Scout 2 is an AWS tool, Prowler only audits AWS, and so on and so forth. But what, the, what we really liked about Swiss as a project was it brought all these tools together and generated one common report. The thing with CSV for us, and again, I'm just think I'm just re re recanting this for a second, um, was CSV is built to generate a report, not necessarily a audit log for a sim or something similar like that. And so, I'll, again, going back to Rod's point, there was some modification uh, that 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 was made in order to support that uh, function. But um, for the most part, CSV is really straightforward to get started with. You just need really read privileges or an API, a service API token, and something like GCP or Azure in order to scan for lack of a better word, your cloud provider. Um, and again, the 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 the, the one thing to watch out for is you may your your visibility into the scans may vary based on the rights you have on those keys. Um, especially if you if your if your cloud deployment is segmented, um, you gotta account for that right when you're when you're setting up your keys. Um, so this is what CS Suite looks like when you run it. Uh, of what a, what a report uh, basically generates like a kind of shape of report of like a, a, a in this case I believe this one is for. Uh, Azure, so it's giving you like uh, the uh, the result sets for like Security Center, what checks you know what, what things failed for like the storage accounts, logging, so on and so forth, and you get this. Um, you also get this for things like Azure, right? So this is, for example, the, sorry for GCP. This is the GCP benchmarks, right? So like, what did you leave a network open mistakenly, or maybe it wasn't mistaken, but it'll still report you know you know hey you have like all traffic coming into this uh, this specific instance. Do you really want this publicly open or not, right? Um, there's another example for AWS, right? Again, they're, they're all individually different reports, um, but, but they're, they're, they're looking at all the checks for that specific cloud provider. Now, before I jump into what the data looks like, I really wanna walk everyone through some of the challenges into getting this set up on your own. And, and, and again, just to highlight potential like gotchas and hopefully you can get through them really fast and uh, especially after this talk. So like one thing to watch out first is logging in any cloud provider costs money. Watch out for that. Like just make sure you get a budget calculator before you start turning everything on because your bill is going to rank up really fast. Um, and it requires time for setup. Uh, and what I mean by time for setup, for example, in GCP is not just a matter of like, you know, I click a button and I'm logging everything. Um, but but uh, there you know there's there's you need to walk through configuration in there. Um, there you know you need to have a platform that can uh, you, in that cloud provider you need to have the the inner workings to index and stream the data into some sort of sim right. So that's something to, to account for that's not native in cloud providers. Uh, so you need you need an architecture for streaming and storage um, and some some analysis framework right. In this case we're using Splunk and Elk as examples, but you're also going to need some sort of analysis framework to analyze the logs coming out of those cloud providers. Um, good saving grace here is most providers are using JSON as output. Bad save, the bad thing about that is to, to, to Rod's point earlier, they're not normalized. So we had to normalize all, a lot of that uh, coming in. If you were tomorrow turning on logging for a cloud provider, this is roughly what the architecture would look like. You have your service, 
you have your, 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 you know, your individual cloud providers, you have your, the services inside that provider, and most likely you're going to use a message bus. Right? And this is best practice, right? When I mean a message bus is in AWS world is SQS and uh, GCP world is PubSub and Azure, they have this whole own logging thing called Azure log integration. And optionally, you may or may not want to, so, so each of the services are, are generating their own logs into a message bus, and then you may or may not store that into a, a storage bucket for retention. And again, may or may not, it depends on a lot of things, right? like costs or what you're going to, whether you need it to store it or not. Um, and then you're going to have some sort of agent pick that up from either the storage bucket or the actual message bus itself and send it to your actual like uh, indexing system, like your analysis engine. Um, and CS Suite sits somewhere in the same place where like the agent would sit to pull stuff off, but instead of pulling data out, it's scanning for like what's what's incorrect in that cloud provider, or what, what's not really up to, up to par security wise. Um, Again, big values of like integrating popular sims is, you know, you get knowledge objects out of it, right? So you, you get like fields extracted out of it. You can do a, a proactive alerting when a check fails um, or a bunch of checks fails. Um, it, it, you can do automation around like, for example, if something is failing, you can quarantine it immediately with some with like a, a phantom, for example, in the Splunk world, uh, sore based applications. Um, let's dig now into the reports. Elk. Elk is really uh, to get this to uh, to get the, the events to work with uh, to bring uh, CSV events into Elk. It's pretty straightforward. You just file beat config, and there's nothing real unique here in this file beat config besides the fact that I'm telling it there's JSON, right? So JSON keys on the root, um, and here's what the data looks like. Again, pretty much you get a uh, you get a, you get different things like category fields that natively, for example, CS3 doesn't give you, and the categories are broken down again, like what, what Rod just explained, which is management, service, uh, compute, storage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the name of the check, so in this case, uh, in the picture, we're saying ensure log metric filter and alarm exists for management console sign-in, right? So like, are you logging, uh, do you have a filter for logging, man uh, for logging management logins? <laughs> oh, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, again, this is just an example. and. Clearly, because again, this is already all logged in. Right here, I'm showing you just a quick, really dirty graph of like uh, all the checks that failed, or in this case, they set us warning for uh, all the cloud providers for us. And then they broke in. It looks like most of it was management and some of it was the security on the security category. Um, I want to show you what Splunk looks like really quickly now. And again, like, uh, it's the same data set. It's all JSON or CSV outputs JSON, and we're just bringing it into one provider and the next, right? Um, Again, you'll, you'll see here in, in the Splunk side of the house, uh, there's a bit more of a, a, a more, I guess, a, 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 known, a more complex search just because I added things like, you know, what the, uh, you have like a service field, like who the service provider was, if you want to break it down. Um, here's a good like a, a, a view of like what uh, the different checks for Azure would look like, like that you'll get back, right? So like, um, like manual extensions, like a VM does not have a, the you know the the the, the data disk encrypted, uh, the retention policy is not set, so on and so forth. Um, here's a quick dashboard we threw together uh, for Splunk of like all the checks we were running across. We we set up three different dev clouds, made them purposely vulnerable, right? And and then so we we set a cron job to run CS Suite, uh, put the logs, and then index that to us, and we built this dashboard with that. And and again, just trying to give you a flavor of what data you can get out of it. But things like you know, hey. We're roughly there's about a hundred and something uh, individual checks for each cloud provider. Um, and so you get, you know, okay, what checks are passing, which ones are failing. Clearly you want the red to be zero at some point. So if you have like a sock and you're working a sock and you're working this down, each of these are essentially should be a ticket to either make a change or to remediate, right? Um, a, you know, a breaking down my category, but the, you know, which provider is failing the most in this case, Azure is I think our, our worst perpetrator in this case. Um, and, under this, you get a very, very good detailed table of like who, you know, which category, what provider, what the specific check was, and and uh, and the and basically the value in this case was what's actually failing. Like in this case, uh, for example, uh, the EC2 audit failed list of servers which are not associated with IAM instance profile, blah 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 blah. Right, and it's, it's, it's giving you all the instances that for us were not associated with the like standard profile that we spun up. Right. Um, I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys. The first time we ran this against our own development clouds, we found stuff that we didn't know we had left open. 
that was almost like a stamp of validation. So like, yeah, this stuff kind of works. <laughs> um, the, the, the beauty, and again, I think I, I couldn't speak highly enough. The beauty of CSC is the fact that it, it encompasses so many checks that it, it, I'll give you, I'll give you another, again, another like story. Like recently I, I, I spun up cloud exploit. If you never use it as a, it does something very similar to this. And I ran it against all of this at same dev clouds, and I got the exact same result checks that cloud split gives me almost by the by the name, right? Um, it's very thorough. It's where I'm getting it, and it's free, <laughs> and you can run it operationally, twenty four seven. Like I mentioned earlier, it's very like in Splunk or Elk, right? Uh, Elk you can use Watcher, and Splunk you, you you can use uh, uh, just a save as an alert to invoke some sort of uh, uh, automation to either remediate that immediately or send an alert or create a ticket. So again, it, it, it's easy to take this and then put it into your SOC and operationalize it ideally. Um, that's, uh, that's all. Thank you.